then I'd say let's start again with a quick round of introduction uh, from from the candidates and uh, as always an order of appearance and Marina since you were first how would you start okay I'm the lucky one now <laughs> starting so um, well what to say first of all again uh, thanks everyone for joining uh, also thanks to uh, people that uh, will decide to watch the recording later uh, so, I'm uh, Marina, um, mainly starting uh, my contributions to the project uh, from the Italian community when it was still open office time. And uh, yeah, I was uh, at the university, so as uh, a lot of other uh, contributors, I started uh, doing uh, translations uh, to Italian and uh, in parallel with that, some uh, uh, QA activities uh, uh, always uh, with the um, with the open office uh, community. Uh, then uh, when uh, the uh, fork uh, became something uh, concrete, uh, I was uh, more than happy to <laughs> jump uh, in the LibreOffice project. And uh, with the Italian community, uh, we, we decided also to, to make uh, a real, uh, I mean, an official legal entity uh, for supporting uh, the activities uh, done uh, locally by the Italian community. And uh, what else to add? Uh, yes. Uh, so before that, uh, um, I was uh, mainly involved uh, on, uh, on the local level, so as a just a normal community member working locally without really interacting uh, with, uh, with the international community. and. Uh, uh, after that, uh, I, I decided to engage a bit more uh, with, uh, with the project, uh, so um, I, I was running for the board uh, 2016 uh, and um, for, the, for the last uh, term, uh, so the, the, the current term, uh, I, I decided to try to contribute to the membership committee. Uh, switching uh, the, the focus of my contribution from uh, the kind of governance uh, and activities done on the board uh, to something uh, more uh, related to the community that uh, is more the, the job done in the membership committee. And I think it's, uh, it's enough from my side. Thanks a lot, Marina. And also thanks a lot for, um, for running again um, this, this term. So then we have Uwe as the second candidate. Please, if you would introduce yourself. Oh, OK. So the, the most of you, well, half of you know me for some for at least a few years. So I'll, I'll make it short. I came to the project when its name was Open Office and, and starting of the 2000s. I think 2003 or 2004, uh, this, this, uh, when they started, uh, the French people started, uh, I don't know the name, um, to make a Mac OS port, an X11 port of open office. Um, and then I, I, I've been quite a long time along with the German community, which was very, very active in this time, about 20, 30, 40 people um, engaging in, in, in open office things. Um, mostly uh, we, we made a thing at the CBIT, uh, CBIT which was uh, the, the, the biggest computer fair in the world then. And uh, but those things declined a lot. Then, uh, then the the, the fork LibreOffice happened, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so I so I engaged there, uh, mostly in in uh, doing some QA on the Max, testing testing uh, errors and such things, uh, keeping keeping uh, users uh, uh, answers answer, answer, answering uh, the questions and such things. And uh, get engaged in the in the TDF itself, and the GDPR emerged in Europe, uh, and and did a project for the for the TDF, uh, introducing GDPR in, in TDF structures, uh, mainly in the website and um, some other things too. And following this discussion, we had we had a discussion about the tooling in the MC, and so. Uh, 
31 came to another so I run for the MC two years ago and uh, since then I uh, I try to improve the tooling of the MC most of the time because I'm a substitute member so I have nothing to say there <laughs> which isn't true because uh, because we quite quite heard uh, every voice uh, also um, so there's no big difference between members and substitute members there. Uh, okay, that's that's all for for the start. If some questions emerge, I may answer them. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thanks a lot, Uwe. Um, so yeah, so with that, I think we can start with the uh, um, first round of questions. So um, how how we would run that. Uh, is that um, uh, people can ask questions either uh, just uh, raising their hand and asking it here in the video, or they can just type it in the in the chat, uh, and then we would take the candidates would then take turns to answer that question, and then we we continue like rinse and repeat and start with the next question. So, um, are there any questions from from anyone here uh, uh, towards the candidates? No, so we can go home. <laughs> well, there was we have. I mean, just uh, um, for for the for the uh, those who did not uh, find time, uh, I haven't. Uh, I, I have not uh, taken notes like uh, on the attendance list. But um, the, we had a nice, very nice round of questions um, already, um, also from uh, from staff and community. Uh, um, the first session. So it might actually be a little bit um, redundant for people who were here for the second time. Um, um, but fear not, I have some questions prepared. Uh, so we will not run out of things to talk about um, if there's nothing. But let's maybe let just for, for warm up, let, let me start with uh, uh, asking a question. Then we will see if that leads to uh, other questions and we take it from there. Um, so um, there was a, there was a question uh, that a few candidates have answered yet uh, already on the mailing list on the board discuss list. Uh, but from what I can tell not everybody. So um, I would maybe start with asking that question again here and then you can either refer to the to board discuss or or um, expand a bit on that uh, or answer. So let's see if that works. Um, so the um, obviously the, the, one of the primary roles of the membership committee is evaluating applications or renewals. And for that, we need uh, you, you need to assess like, is that contribution um, meeting uh, the, the, the threshold? And as the statute say, uh, it has to be significant and non-trivial. Um, and what would be the criteria, just like roughly how, how you would evaluate that? Um, so um, what would be, maybe, maybe with an example, what would be trivial, what would not be, be non-trivial? And um, the third part of that, that set of question was wh whether that would make any difference depending on the area of contribution, let's say. QA versus translation or marketing versus system administration or development. So then let's start again with Marina. Okay, so um, I was uh, mentioning already um, my, let's say, view on, uh, on those questions uh, directly on the uh, board discuss uh, list so definitely if you want to have a look at that uh, you can also find uh, a, a reply on this topic but uh, for uh, for the recording uh, uh, let me try to say that uh, um, first of all when we are getting uh, um, renewals in general uh, a, a renewal evaluation can be easier because the member is a uh, is a known person uh, or uh, uh, in general, because uh, the tools uh, that we have uh, attended are um, already providing us uh, some uh, guidance on uh, uh, 
the amount of contributions. And uh, with that, uh, we can have a look uh, at uh, uh, the kind of contributions that uh, are uh, reported. So, um, for giving you an example of uh, maybe a contribution that is too trivial for, be a, for being considered as a, as a good one, uh, let's take the case of uh, a code contribution that uh, is just fixing uh, one typo. Uh, maybe one typo for uh, a, a new application. Uh, it's, it's not enough. It's clear that uh, saying uh, uh, the correction of the typo is not enough, uh, it's not telling uh, completely the, the truth, because uh, if this person uh, is uh, really uh, working uh, constantly on uh, uh, cleaning up uh, the, the comments that are in the, in the code, uh, fixing a, a lot of typo, then uh, this contribution can, can be also considered as, uh, as a non-trivial one, uh, given the amount of, the, uh, of those uh, easier contributions. So that uh, it's also one of the um, uh, distinctions that, uh, that we need to, to make. Um, then uh, uh, when it comes to new applications, uh, that kind of evaluation is uh, harder normally, because um, really often uh, the, the member is just, uh, uh, the, the member, the uh, applicant is just uh, uh, a new one uh, that uh, sometimes uh, is just sending uh, an application uh, uh, even uh, before contributing. So in that case, we are really uh, digging uh, around uh, the, the dashboard uh, uh, that is aggregating uh, all the information that we have. Uh, we are uh, Googling around, uh, uh, searching uh, if uh, uh, we were lucky enough uh, to get uh, in this application also the details of some uh, contact person that could uh, help us. So um, when it comes uh, to new applications, uh, the, the task is definitely not, uh, not easy. Uh, if we have something to evaluate, uh, then of course, uh, as we, we also mentioned uh, during the, the previous uh, session, um, what we need to do is to uh, to see if uh, the contribution is uh, something in line with uh, uh, what uh, our status is uh, telling us, uh, meaning that uh, um, contributing uh, uh, with uh, with code, of course, it's uh, it's uh, it's a valid contribution. Um, doing um, marketing, uh, doing uh, advocacy or QA or translations, working on guides, uh, uh, it's uh, of course. Uh, everything that can be considered as, uh, as good. Um, as we said uh, uh, this morning, uh, um, what we can improve on this topic uh, is to try to provide uh, um, a, a more clear guidance on the quantity of those uh, contributions uh, uh, that can, uh, can be considered as uh, good enough for, uh, for reaching uh, this threshold for being uh, accepted. And uh, this is uh, definitely something uh, that uh, we could uh, work on. Uh, then uh, for what concerns uh, the, uh, the different uh, um, rating according to the areas, uh, I, I don't think that uh, doing uh, development uh, should be considered uh, less relevant than uh, doing uh, uh, translations or other way to contribute to the project. If uh, the contribution is uh, something uh, fulfilling uh, uh, the, the mission of TDF, uh, uh, is a contribution that uh, must be evaluated, uh, and then uh, uh, the DMC should uh, decide uh, if that is enough for being uh, accepted or renewed. But uh, just uh, uh, making a, a difference because of the um, kind of contribution, uh, it, it's something that uh, should uh, should not happen. I don't know if uh, uh, I answer um, clearly enough uh, to the question. If something is unclear, feel free to, to ask more. Um, thanks for that, Marina. That it's, um, was very clear and uh, extensive for me. So um, then, uh, Uwe, what's your, your take on that? Uh, 
It's quite easy because Marina described the actual practice of the MC the last two years, so there is uh, that it is. <laughs> I may I may add some some remarks from my side um, because it's it's and sometimes it's hard to uh, to answer the question for criteria because uh, at least in my term in the last two years there hasn't been the need to develop those. So let, let me give you an, uh, an example. So I, I see, let's say, four areas of, big areas of contribution. The first one is code contribution and QA. Uh, there, there, is, there hasn't been, as far as I remember, no corner case. There have been contributions, like Marina told, those typo correcting, which have been obviously trivial, and the rest is that obvious, non-trivial, because of amount and quality, that there is just not the question of uh, which criteria we can take because it is so obvious. There is no need to have, there, there was never a discussion on that. So uh, maybe maybe we will some in some time some point in the future we'll come to a point where we need to develop criteria, but by now it's not necessary. Uh, translation and documentation is the second big area where <laughs> where uh, most most things happen, and also there is it's a little bit more difficult there because it is uh, more there are more dimensions i think we have for instance we have a corner case each year that is a translation a translator who doesn't that much translating but he is the only one for his language and because we consider to have this language in the portfolio of languages um, we consider it very important to have this translator in uh, as a member. Even if, let's say, if five others would contribute to his language, maybe we had we would have some more discussion. If this is not a trivial uh, contribution, but as you can see, there are more than one dimension we have here. And so it's also a little bit difficult to, to explain the criteria explicitly. Oh, okay, Marina. No, no, feel free to, to finish. I would like just to reply to, to Cora that was uh, uh, writing something in the chat. So feel free to finish. Oh, okay. Uh, the second, the, the third one, the big one is the marketing thing where uh, I think the line, uh, the, the line is quite clear as I follow the discussion. So if there is some some public action, this is normally seen as a contribution. Uh, if it is not in the public, because let's say well, uh, someone held university uh, lectures about using LibreOffice uh, and so on, this is normally not seen as a contribution for the project, as well as, oh, I installed five times or 50 times or 500 times LibreOffice in this project on, on the PCs of the people uh, is uh, normally not seen as a contribution because it doesn't contribute to the project. Quite clear. And the last one is uh, what I see are some special cases from people which are engaged in governance. Um, typical cases, Michael Schienagel. I've never seen a code contribution or a translation from Mike. Uh, but I think there is no doubt that he contributes a lot to the project. So, as you can see, there is there is many many dim dimensions of of uh, how people can contribute. I think if if I think, would think a few days together with the rest of the MC, there will, there will be even more of those. So it is, and then to say what is the criteria of a non-trivial contribution? You see, that's it's nearly impossible. We can't do so. Um, I'm very lucky uh, that we have some only some few corner cases each year, and as far as I can see, DMC is in every case I remember 
there, there is no big difference in, in valuing those things. So this is this is mostly consensual was what we do without that big discussion. And most of the work is finding out what are possible contributions of people who don't tell us. They, do you, we ask in the, in the application form, we ask, do you contribute? And they say, yes. And leave it to us to find out what. So um, this is, in fact, the, the, the most work and not a discussion if someone is substantial or someone is not substantial. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot, Uwe. That was a very, very, very extensive and, and uh, insightful um, answer. And um, Marina, back to you. You wanted to answer to questions in the chat. Uh, yeah, so um, in particular to Cor, he was uh, asking, uh, uh, commenting uh, uh, that uh, when he was in the EMC, uh, then they got some uh, uh, uneasy uh, evaluation to, to make. What well, we had, we had cases. So uh, normally, uh, when uh, we, when we need to decline to, to reject the renewal of uh, of a member, we are trying to to dig really hard if we can uh, find something that we missed, uh, in particular if uh, uh, this member that will get rejected is an outstanding uh, contributor. So it's not that uh, it's everything uh, easy and smooth and we have uh, the unicorns. No, no, this is it's not the case. But uh, normally when, uh, when the members are providing us uh, the information and uh, they are investing the time in uh, telling us a bit more than, uh, yes, I'm contributing, as I mentioned a few seconds ago. <laughs> Normally, that, uh, that it's easy. Uh, the, the trivial is uh, when uh, we don't get enough information. Or um, what we had, uh, uh, for example, uh, during, uh, during uh, these um, years with, uh, with COVID, uh, it's also some uh, members that uh, uh, due to health issues, uh, simply stated that uh, I would like to contribute, but I had uh, issues and uh, I was focusing on my health. I have, I had no chance to contribute to the project. Uh, in that case, uh, it's uh, sad to decline, uh, definitely, to reject. Uh, and uh, instead of just rejecting, uh, we are trying to say uh, we are sorry. We hope to see you soon uh, back on contributions. I mean, there's a more uh, a human part uh, that uh, is involved. Uh, these in particular for those cases, uh, but uh, in general, uh, when, uh, when we need to reject, it's, uh, it's the ugly part of the job, <laughs> definitely. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot for that. Um, if that answers the question, I, I would have one more follow up question along those lines, because it was really, really great to hear that that in depth explanation of that, like, like how you um, or, or that, that there's such consensus in the MC, um, how to run that. Um, and Uwe, yes, yeah, one one thing I forgot. And one really important thing, which we think missed both to mention, is that we often have to ask local community members about the contribution of someone. Because all, all those people who are working in their local communities, which are not that seen or not that visible in our infrastructure, uh, then we have to talk to local to talk to the local community, and uh, so this makes really, uh, as I told, many cases are really clear, but in those not so clear cases, this makes really a difference if we have someone to ask to um, write who knows that person then. So this is this is one of the reasons because it is very important. The membership committee is uh, is uh, has has people from all around the world and from from as much, many communities as possible. It's just to add to the. To uh, the I think it's 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 very helpful um, for for every, for all TDF bodies to have 
proper representation. But that's that's what I believe. Um, so so where I was getting, uh, and sorry for um, kind of sneaking that question in, but it, it directly um, relates to, to what we, we, we what what you explained. Um, if if the if the the MC would be completely new, so it sounds to me like there's a lot of institutional knowledge in the MC, like like how you run the processes and how you evaluate, and and uh, you, you seem to have reached a point where that's very unanimous, like you all agree, like how that should be. Um, would you consider that documented or or established enough that? Uh, a completely new MC could continue that, or um, would there be a gap? Same order, or for the replies? Torsten Torsten asked if we if it is would be sensible to document. No, no, no. I got the question. I'm asking uh, who should uh, answer first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think, yeah, okay, let, let me call you then. Um, it's would, a bit weird because it's just to, me and Uwe. <laughs> I don't want yeah, to jump I, I on think, in. I think, we, but yeah, so let, let's do it. First. Let's do it calling. So, Marina, if you would, if you would answer first. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I think that uh, in this case, uh, uh, both me and Uwe are new to DMC because <laughs> this is definitely our first step. And uh, uh i don't think it was uh, so hard to get used to the to the work uh what we had uh, was uh, uh an initial onboarding uh, from uh, florian that was uh, uh telling us uh, the, the usual uh, uh guidance uh, explaining the, the usual uh, things that we need to keep in mind uh, like uh, you know gdpr or uh, the, the uh, different list uh, and things. Uh, so it's the kind of onboarding uh, that uh, uh, is uh, similar uh, to the to the one that also the the members of the, the board are getting. And uh, apart from that, uh, for the tool, uh, we had in any case uh, Gustavo already dealing with, uh, with the tool. In the current term, uh, there was also Dennis. Uh, uh, working uh, already on it. Uh, there was Gabriele with, uh, with a bit of knowledge. So I think that we simply split uh, the, the task according to the uh, expertise of the different people involved. Uh, I, I think it was uh, quite natural to just uh, pick uh, uh, the, the different skills and uh, try, try to use those. Uh, for the documentation, uh, well, Maybe uh, starting with a complete fresh uh, MC could be helpful uh, to have uh, a documentation of uh, the, the current uh, existing tool. But given that we are going uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the new one or with uh, Proteus, uh, I think that really starting uh, from, from zero just with that uh, should work, uh, let's say, straight away because the, the tool uh, has been uh, defined uh, uh, properly with uh, all the steps uh, that uh, needs to be taken uh, quite clear. So I think that the documentation of what is missing uh, with a complete new MC can be done. Yeah, can be helpful. But uh, with a, with a new tool, that will be definitely easier to to jump in without any kind of knowledge. Yeah, I think I think the onboarding Florian did, and uh, let's say two hour introduction in Proteus. Will do. Yes. At the, at the moment, if if, if if Gustavo will will not be elected again, this would hit us hard <laughs> because he's the, the most experienced uh, with us with the old tool, with the, with the MCM database. But I think the new tool uh, is, is quite uh, quite easier to handle and, and more transparent in its technology and so. So this should be a problem. Okay, good to hear. Thanks a lot. Then uh, there was a question uh, from the audience. Um, I'll try to uh, read. Um, so for for the candidates for which this is uh, the, the the second or repeated term, which is um, both of you, incidentally, um, 
what are the conclusions of the MC uh, interviews and, and the community surveys um, that were done a few months ago? And uh, is there anything you can already tell us about that? Uh, yeah, I think there's uh, nothing uh, secret that uh, that we can't share. So for uh, for what concerns uh, the the survey, there was the uh, the presentation that we gave uh, uh, at the last conference. So some bits uh, are already there, and definitely uh, we need to to follow up with uh, more uh, actions for uh, also addressing uh, the the issues that. Uh, uh, we we saw from uh, from that survey, and uh, for the um, uh, sessions uh, with uh, with the communities, uh, uh, first of all, the sessions uh, are just with a few of the communities that we have. Uh, uh, it's just uh, that uh, we we tried to to look at uh, the possible local communities uh, with a connection uh, with uh, um, one of us in the MC and. We decided to go with uh, a session with the Japanese community, another session uh, uh, where we had uh, a part of the Brazilian and part of the Spanish community. Uh, so in total, we had uh, three of those sessions. Uh, and uh, with uh, the information that we have, uh, we can already start to do something, uh, but maybe could be good in any case to uh, also try to replicate uh, these uh, very same uh, approach also with the others because yeah we got a lot of feedback but still the feedback uh, are only from uh, a subsection of our uh, local communities uh, something in common uh, that uh, i can uh, definitely share uh, is that uh, there are some uh, common uh, issues uh, inside uh, those local communities uh, that could be uh, shared uh, and uh, addressed uh, also with uh, examples from uh, uh, how other local communities are working on the very same topic. Uh, for giving you a, a concrete uh, example, uh, there were some uh, discussions uh, on uh, how to uh, how that local community was using a web late and the, the issues that uh, they got. Uh, uh, that they are experiencing, uh, and in some cases uh, uh, could be probably helpful uh, to to just uh, uh, share uh, a bit more uh, how the different local communities are using uh, the tools uh, that we have in common, and that could be already helpful. Mm, then uh, I, I know that this one it's not exactly uh, a, a topic uh, for the MC. Uh, as uh, considering uh, what we are doing inside uh, the foundation, but in any case, it's uh, it's a feedback, and uh, if uh, we have the chance to get a feedback uh, from a local community, uh, it's worth in any case to mention it uh, uh, then uh, to the to the right uh, uh, contact uh, inside uh, the, the foundation that can uh, can help to to address the problem. So we also decided to keep in the list uh, uh, those more technical uh, questions that. Uh, are not exactly related uh, directly to the to the governance of the project. Um, there were uh, feedback uh, on uh, <coughs> how um, the the budget for the local activities uh, um, is uh, is addressed uh, is uh, is used uh, is uh, requested by the local communities uh, um, and uh, what else? Uh, uh, some other comments uh, on, uh, uh, for example, how to uh, to deal uh, uh, locally with uh, some marketing materials uh, um, that could be produced uh, locally instead of having a TDF uh, shipping from Germany all over the world. Um, so, uh, in general, I think that uh, what uh, what we agreed uh, inside the DMC was. Uh, uh, to aggregate uh, those uh, um, feedback uh, with some ideas or some proposals uh, in uh, one unique document, and we finally made it. And uh, with that, uh, share this document uh, with, uh, with the team, uh, with, the, with the board, and start uh, to, to discuss uh, uh, initially there um, those proposals. Uh, but of course, it's uh, nothing secret. Uh, so after this uh, initial uh, um, sharing of this common, of, you know, just for having a common background on the problem, uh, we could uh, uh, open the 
uh, discussion directly with, uh, with the rest of the community. At least uh, this was uh, the, the idea that, uh, that we had uh, in, the, in the MC. And I think I was talking enough, so <laughs> let me pass the, the ball to Uwe. Yes, please, Uwe. Just to add one thing, um, which perhaps in, puts a light on the problem I see there. Um, we had, with, uh, as we have with the Latam community, this talk, we had uh, the question about local marketing material as well as community budget. So put together, there are people who want to do something, to act on something, but they just don't know how to get it paid. And what is really hard to see is, obviously don't know how whom to ask for. It is not that much that they uh, had no idea to do, but what I what I was what was very astonishing for me that they maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it it, it, uh, it seemed to, it seemed to me they they didn't really know who to ask for the money or who 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 to ask how the procedures are within the TDF. And I think this this is a really big gap. Uh, we, we can close with those uh, at the end, really, really easy to, to manage uh, uh, meetings where, where different people from the TDF, maybe also from the staff or from the board or from someone else, engaged more on the TDF level and not on the local level and who knows how the things run there. Uh, just just maybe ask them such simple things. And uh, okay, this was just to add what Marina already said. This is and uh, complementing that uh, one of the other feedback uh, was that uh, uh, if they know how to ask for this budget, uh, some of them uh, uh, are not sure that uh, what they want to do with this money is uh, enough uh, for really asking for the money. Uh, so this is also the other uh, the other issues that uh, the, the other issue that uh, we we somehow uh, had reported. So the, the fear that uh, uh, how the local community is working uh, is not. Uh, good enough uh, for even asking uh, to this entity that is TDF uh, uh, to get some money uh, or um, other uh, people uh, um, that, uh, uh, for example, would like to organize uh, activities, uh, but uh, uh, the issue that uh, they should get reimbursed later, it's a problem because they can't afford uh, to uh, initially uh, pay what, uh, what is needed. So those uh, around uh, the, the budget were uh, less or more the, the comments uh, that, uh, that we got. And this, is, this is quite similar to some people who don't know if their contribution is enough to apply. And if you look at the contributions, it's war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's exactly the same thing, the same structures. And uh, we have uh, uh, Cole stated that the communication around that somehow doesn't reach the people. Yes, this may be uh, maybe because of a real bad uh, information noise relationship of the, uh, let's say, board discuss list. Uh, if I'm a normal local engaged user, I would cancel this list after three weeks reading it because there is no information which I need you you need to be there for two or three years to get the pieces together in, in some in this discussion some in this discussion so i think it would be a great great thing what what marina started with these town hall meetings or something like similar but just just or uh, meet meet the mc or meet the tdf or something like this in, on an irregular basis to go actively to go to those communities, to those local communities, just sit there drinking a beer and say, okay, is there something you want to ask us? That will be enough. It will be a good step forward, I think. 
uh, now that you mentioned it, Cor, uh, yes, reading uh, the, the list, uh, that is one of the other uh, issues that uh, somehow we got reported. Uh, the, the language, English is a barrier. There are a lot of local contributors that uh, are not uh, good enough uh, uh, with, uh, with the language and uh, they are not interacting uh, with the international community because they are afraid uh, that uh, the, the bad English uh, uh, will put them uh, you know, in, a, in a bad light uh, so that they are shy and they are just not, they are just skipping uh, uh, the interaction uh, completely. Or uh, we are writing in English, but they can't understand the language. And if they don't have uh, locally a member that can uh, guide them, they are lost. They, yeah. they don't know. Yeah. So one of the uh, proposals that, uh, um, that we got uh, was, for example, to, to try to see if uh, we can uh, uh, empower uh, the, the members, so the, the, member of the, the members of the Board of Trustees, uh, to act, uh, for example, like uh, kind of uh, uh, local uh, ambassadors for the local community. Of course, as we say that during uh, that meeting, uh, we don't want to replicate uh, the, the bad experience we had uh, during uh, the open office time uh, with uh, some uh, contributors uh, that were acting uh, locally as uh, community managers. Uh, deciding uh, who was uh, able to interact uh, then with the, with the international community and uh, who was uh, just uh, not good enough uh, for being part of everything. So that is something uh, to, to do carefully, but in general uh, could be also a way to, to give uh, a bit more value to the membership, uh, having uh, the, the local uh, uh, members uh, acting as an initial contact, an initial bridge between the local communities and uh, the international project. And all with care, I know, I'm, uh, I'm worried, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, and, 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 and great to hear that that, um, that was actually, you answered one of the questions that, that I would have asked, which is like, do you also already have ideas how to, how to solve that or how to address that? And, uh, and what I, what I hear is that, first of all, having those town halls, that's actually the first first solution to the problem, which is like going out and learning about those issues. Mm. And then with this, with this local ambassadors, which are probably much, much more visible than um, as, as with, I mean, I think implicitly already have those people who, who are bridges, but like empowering them, empowering them more. Uh, and um, I see Cor, you've raised your hand. Sorry for talking over that. No problem at all, uh, Thorsten. Usually I can wait. Hey, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm really, um, um, I, I really think it's valuable to reach out more to. Hey, now who was nephew left as well? <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm really in, in favor of, of reaching out uh, more, making the, the barrier uh, towards uh, people all around the world lower and, and to help working with them, etc. No doubt that it that works. And I know that some people are just, for whatever reason, a bit more shy. And I know that um, uh, that language is a barrier and that also in meetings, well, I I, I think I often uh, uh, speak up against uh, native English speakers in whatever meetings if they go full away in, the, in their own slang in, at high speed. <laughs> Luckily, I don't try to, to speak Italian, nothing against Italians, but I, from what I understand, it's even more fun. It is, it's even farther. They, having said all that, uh, I also like to uh, ask some nasty things now and then. Um, I can't uh, help because I, I, I cannot, a lot of things that I can imagine, but I cannot imagine if there's an email and you're at a computer and you don't fully digest the language that you not paste it in one of the translation websites for your local language, etc. So, yeah, and, and it, it doesn't mean that we don't have to do anything, but to put it all on our plate. Oh, it's wrong, Uwe. Please, 
what, what this is there? right this is right for one email per week but this can't be done for oh. 20 emails a day oh on, only 20 hey sorry. only 20 yeah <laughs> I, so, no, no, so no. basically you're right this is not also we don't have to do anything and to carry anything to anyone yeah but, uh, this is this is quite too easy just uh, yeah, yeah, okay I, it's, it's not a, not a solution I, I I was referring to the announcement of that that people can ask for budgets etc but honestly if 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 people uh, are expected to read the localization list for example um yeah they should be able to read English anyhow um uh, l let's see how we can improve that and, and <laughs> not try to find like when we can't, it can't be English, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, but there are many, many other local lectures. Let's maybe, I'm, let's I'm maybe focus. Let's maybe I'm focus back a little bit on, on asking on asking concrete questions. That, uh, as much as I like the the, the conversation, um, um, oh, sorry. Maybe, maybe there's Wrong more matter. more questions from, like concrete questions. Uh, for for the candidates um not wanting i mean marina uh Uwe, not wanting to to cut you off so if if you still have input there uh do speak up uh so so there's a follow-up question um pretty much in line with uh, what you suggested but a bit more formalized would paying a local coordinator that can act as a gateway be a solution? Uh, there was, I, I would just post one idea I had after our meeting in the, at, at noon about uh, fiduciary duties of uh, the members uh, of the membership committee. Uh, just to remind you, the Board of Trustees also is a formal body of the TDF. And by that, it was also those fiduciary duties. So any member is called to act here, not only some boards, perhaps. Kind of relieved to hear that. It's a tough story, right? <laughs> uh, don't, don't tell the members, they will get scared. <laughs> Well, technically speaking, uh, they should know that because for applying for a membership, uh, they should uh, tick the I read the statute thingy. And, uh, I mean, like in every contract, uh, you should read what you are signing. We all know that it's not always the case, but I mean, yeah. But um, we always tell them it makes no difference. They just have to do an election one, 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 once a time in a year. So. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, jokes apart, uh, it, it's clear that we need to explain uh, to our uh, members of the Board of Trustees that uh, being a member is not just uh, uh, getting an email uh, at LibreOffice.org and uh, being able to vote for uh, the board or the MC or decide to, to run. It should be more, definitely more. And we need to explain uh, them uh, what is this more adding also something uh, for making uh, the, the initial uh, uh, work uh, a bit more appealing. So directly asked on, on Paolo's, in my opinion, no. This, uh, I, I think this, this is a thing that community should be able to manage by itself. And if it's not able to do so, then let's think about what's going wrong with that community. So I, I don't I don't like the idea to pay local coordinators as as gateways. This would be maybe a great idea to to empower um, the ecosystem around the world to uh, to get get some more companies and, and professional programs into the system. But for for the community, I don't think it makes very much sense. My opinion. Mm, yeah, I mean, at least uh, looking at uh, how we are defining, uh, we define the TDF for the moment, uh, I, I can't see how we could uh, select uh, those local coordinators uh, that should somehow employ the, uh, for working uh, as, a, as you might call the 
gateway for the community. In particular, because I mean, if uh, we are paying uh, this person, uh, then we need to make sure that the contributions uh, done by this person are uh, enough uh, uh, for also making this person uh, able to, to get a membership. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not so trivial. We could even reduce uh, the, the number of members because we, we just uh, uh, have uh, everyone on board uh, as a as employee that is only doing a paid job, and that could be could be a problem. I don't know. I mean, then uh, let's see what uh, what the future will uh, will bring. But um, for the for the moment, I I agree with uh, with Uwe. I don't think we can really pay a, a local coordinator. We could start uh, with uh, empowering uh, the the local members uh, and uh, and see how we can help them to to grow locally. I mean, interacting with uh, I don't know universities uh, uh, or interacting uh, with uh, companies that are. Uh, working locally um, I mean I, I remember for example the the activity done with the, with the Turkish community uh, by by collabora uh, with uh, Mohammed uh, giving a lot of uh, lectures uh, um, in uh, that directly in the university so this is something that uh, uh, that we should uh, also look into but just uh, paying a local coordinator, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, <sighs> let's say, in this way, out of the box, uh, just uh, going randomly and paying someone, It's I, I don't know if it's really a, a good way to just invest uh, uh, TDF uh, donations. OK, thanks for that. Um, last yeah. last answer, Uwe, on that? To answer call, no, we don't. Uh evaluate that idea and so if then let would... me quickly jump in there Uwe, because i'd like to yeah. wrap this into a bit of a larger question and uh, if i may okay <laughs> okay so uh the, the the larger question uh and we had to discuss that um also in the in the earlier session is this how can we or do you as as a as standing MC and candidate for the next MC have good ideas um, how to grow and foster membership, like in particular with, with your connections to, to local communities. And, and that's where, where a course question um, goes right into that direction. Uh, and course asking whether um, the MC has thought about organizing, for example, prizes or, or other um, the intangible things uh, to give out so that uh, membership becomes more attractive? Uh, so if we are going uh, with the same order, um, we were looking uh, also at some uh, ideas on that direction. Uh, so um, one proposal was to uh, look into other, let's say, good uh, projects uh, uh, that could provide, uh, for example, uh, some uh, uh, discounts uh, for uh, our members uh, or some special offers uh, for our members. And uh, with that, uh, uh, we could tell to members that given that they are also members, so they are not just getting uh, a, a libreoffice.org uh, uh, email address, but if they want, uh, they can also get uh, uh, some discounts uh, from uh, uh, projects uh, that uh, um, uh, kind of partner, partner with, uh, with TDF. It's uh, something, of course, uh, that uh, must be evaluated, uh, approved uh, by the board, uh, because we should have a kind of uh, agreement with those uh, projects. Uh, uh, we should see, for example, if uh, this project uh, is also doing uh, uh, some, g giving something back to LibreOffice, uh, if it's somehow contributing. So also the selection of uh, those uh, kind of partner should be should be done uh, carefully. But for other community, uh, for other communities, uh, this is something that seems to work. So I think we should. Uh, try to continue to, to look also in this uh, direction. Uh, 
yeah, it's uh, not the unique way to, to involve uh, people. It's uh, probably the, the first one. You know, when uh, when you are uh, at the conference and uh, there's a table uh, full of gadgets, uh, some people are coming closer for the gadget, uh, and then you can uh, try to catch them <laughs> and uh, talk and uh, interact uh, and see if uh, af after giving a sticker, you can also get uh, the person uh, engaged enough uh, uh, for at least uh, trying to ask you something back. Doesn't work for everyone, but it's uh, it's something uh, that uh, can be done. To actually just one aspect and to answer core directly to this fun question if we evaluated ever the idea to organize price draws. Uh, maybe, but surely not to make membership more attractive. If ever we do such thing, we would do it to make contributing more attractive. And this has to be understood perfectly for anyone here. We don't run for more members. Uh, as, as Marina said this morning, what's the use in telling, oh, we have 1,000 members, but just a few, uh, few 30 or 40 are running, running for the board or are even are going electing the board and the, the rest is, uh, is quiet. As we have by now, I think the... Uh, um, the quota for for the membership uh, electing the board, the last was about 50% around there. So half of the members even didn't vote. If I remember right, I don't know exactly the number, but it was really low, I thought. So the idea is not to, to blow up the number of members. Uh, I think if someone contributes and develops uh, an idea of uh, interest of in, in governance, he will ask by himself. Maybe we need a little bit nudging him uh, if if we think this would be a good idea to have him on board. But it is not the idea to, to, to have more members and members. It is the idea to have more contributors. And if someone has an idea, if he can get some more contributor by organizing prize draws, okay, why not? Okay, thanks for, for those statements. I think that's um, quite to the point. Core, you had a yeah, follow-up question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. It, it, it's about contributors. Uh, still, uh, in, in discussing, uh, we somehow... Uh, I, I, I think uh, there is also a challenge of making people aware of membership and, uh, and benefits, uh, etc., that, that people somehow don't bother. Also, uh, I, I know at least some examples of people contributing, but just not bothering at all. They say, uh, "Why should I?" But and and I, I sorry, I, it, it's not a serious idea to do price draws. Obviously, uh, it's just a, a it's, something. Uh, it's something like Google Summer of Code. Didn't when I got it right, they they got they got paid for working on this, or at least they got some 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 advantages out of it, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, well, the students get paid um, for, for GSOC, but I suspect the actual uh, price is uh, it's a great thing to have in your CV. Um, I think that's the major draw there. Or one, at, let, yeah. Hard, hard to put a number there, but, um, but I think it, it does play a role. Um, to maybe um, dwell a little bit on on that question, would but would you agree that that it's not irrelevant? Like that it would certainly be a problem if the membership would be continuing to decline, and also the the number of candidates for the bodies of the foundation would be uh, in continued decline. Yeah, I mean. Uh... Reducing uh, the, the board of trustee means that uh, we have uh, less options to get uh, candidates for, uh, for, the, for the board of the MC. We are representing uh, less uh, the, the local communities. So we need to keep, in any case, uh, a, a good balance, uh, being able to grow the membership uh, in a way that can uh, 
uh, really represent uh, all the different uh, uh, contributors. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, we should also work uh, uh, for uh, growing uh, those, uh, uh, those members uh, from uh, the role of just uh, voters to uh, the position of someone that is even interested to do the next step and run for the MC, run for the, for the board. And uh, on these, I think we are a bit failing uh, because uh, if we look at, uh, at the last elections, and I I'm talking about uh, MC or, or, or board, uh, it's not that uh, I'm pointing uh, in particular on one particular body. It's just that we are less or more the same people uh, going from uh, one side to, to the other, or the usual names that are in the community for uh, a lot of years, but uh, we don't have enough uh, new faces. And uh, yeah, that uh, that is a problem that we we need to, to address. Uh, it's what we said uh, this morning. Also, we are getting older, and uh, yeah, it, it's nice to to have more time uh, to to spend on the project. But at the same time, uh, we we can't live forever. So maybe we need to take care of our foundation and be sure that someone else uh, is able to to take over. If uh, uh, tomorrow everyone uh, will uh, disappear. <laughs> Maybe we have to think about the structures we are using. Um, I've worked a little bit with, with the last few boards, uh, mostly because of this GDPR thing, which was very wide in, in, in some, some details. And I got, got an impression, and uh, the impression was that the board is, and we will, we will maybe, maybe we can talk about on this uh, in the workshop at, at uh, Milano, that the board, the board has basically very much more on its table than you could expect from volunteers to handle. And if this is right, we have to think about changing structures. Um, maybe that could also motivate more people to do that work if they uh, if they have the feeling that they can decide something and not only they go into a endless two-year-long quarrel with, with other people and uh, with, with, with little outcome. But this is just a subjective perception at the moment. Not that valid. Yeah, I wouldn't say that the, the thought didn't cross our mind, never. Marina, you had you had a comment. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, following what uh, Uwe was uh, saying a few seconds ago, I think that um, if we can uh, uh, organize uh, our work uh, better, maybe we can also be able to, to delegate more and uh, you know break things to do in a smaller task that can be uh, delegated also to to other. Uh, members that are new in uh, the board of trustee and can grow step by step, uh, uh, understanding better uh, uh, how it is to work on the budget, uh, define uh, uh, how to invest uh, the, the donations uh, or how to handle the, the, the membership uh, uh, and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I think that for these, uh, we really need to, to have a, a clear view of uh, where we want to go and uh, uh, work uh, all together uh, and with all together, I mean really uh, the, all the bodies that we have at TDF uh, plus uh, all the different committees that uh, uh, we, we have. Uh, and I'm talking about a certification committee, ESC or advisory board, uh, not, not just uh, board uh, team uh, and uh, MC. So really, everyone that is uh, working more, uh, interacting more with, uh, with what is uh, the, the governance of the project uh, should uh, yeah, <laughs> talk to, to the others uh, that are uh, doing sometimes uh, similar activities uh, and uh, share, share the workload. Also because the, the majority of us uh, is just uh, a, a volunteer and also the team that is getting paid for doing the job, I mean, it's not a group of uh, people that uh, uh, 
first of all, is a million of people, <laughs> and uh, uh, second, uh, uh, the, the time that uh, is available uh, is just uh, 24 hours per day and should not be 24 hours. So, splitting a bit more the, the work uh, and sharing a bit more the work could, uh, could help. Yeah, I can echo that. And I mean, actually, that that's what you're already doing um, in, in the membership committee. I mean, you're, you started to do work that previously, for example, board people did, like with this um, reaching out uh, for the community, encouraging people, um, doing the running the survey, that sort of thing. Also, the, the conflict of interest uh, policy, which originated in the uh, in the MC. So so in fact, you already are load sharing, load balancing with the board. Uh, and of course, question towards you as, as MC candidates and MC members of, of the current MC, is there a similar situation, let's say overload, too much things to do in the MC that perhaps uh, we, we, we all need to think about how to lighten that load or is that still under control? I mean, uh, we are plenty of ideas. <laughs> it's, I leave that to my chair. Sorry? I leave that to my chair. Uh, no, feel free, to, feel free to speak really. No, I'm sorry. Feel free to go. She's distributing the works, so she should know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to coordinate uh, the work <laughs> inside the DMC. Uh, we can do better, yes, definitely, yes. Uh, the difference that we have with the time zones, uh, it's really mm, pressing uh, inside the DMC. It's great on the other side because we can really cover uh, a lot of uh, different communities, local communities. Uh, at the same time, when we need to schedule a call, it's pretty hard. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think that uh, we have some good ideas on the table. Uh, we should work better with, uh, with the team and with the board for looking at uh, what we can, uh, we should work uh, as, a, as MC and what maybe it's something uh, where, uh, where the team can, can follow better because at the end uh, they are the one uh, working daily on the, on the project. But. Uh, then uh, we can simply overload uh, the team with a task from DMC, with uh, then the team also overloaded the task from the board because then <laughs> doesn't scale anymore. And uh, yeah, it's why I was saying we should have a you know a nice uh, wish list, a ballot list with uh, things uh, that we want to work on and see with some uh, timelines uh, what we can uh, address uh, instead of overloading everyone and uh, achieving a zero. What were your thoughts on that? Um, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take it easy. The uh, original work the MC has to do could be done in uh, let's say two or three one hour sessions per quarter to decide on uh, on some open questions on of some applications that's it all the rest the mc does is voluntary work the mc or some people in to in the mc say Hey, we use our role to do this and that. It is not on our chart, but it is necessary or it's a good idea to do it. So we do it because we can do it. And this is a good idea. Uh, and I think uh, that started with Marina getting the chair. I, I think before that, the MC had some ideas like, like, this, uh, like this questionnaire. But there wasn't really, really something happened. Uh, things happened uh, when I remember right, just when, when, uh, when uh, with, with our term, or just, just short time before. 
So um, this was merely, I think, the initiative of Marina to get other things done too. I remember we started with a long list of things we could do. And uh, maybe in Red Mines somewhere <laughs> it still exists. So if we have no ideas anymore, we can look there. Uh, and it, it came out that we, we, we ended up with two or three things which the MC that did as an MC, but to to make it clear, it was always a small group of MC people who did that, uh, and and the others tried to help where they could. Or well, I can say for me, those town those meetings with the local uh, local communities were organized by Marina, and I don't know who helped you with that. Two or three other people from the MC. And I just tried to be there when 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 the event was there, but I had to do other work. I, I cared about our new tooling, which was also a lot of work, but totally other totally other planet. Uh, and so I think that they evolved a good thing, and we should should go further on this way. But uh, there is there is uh, this is mostly self organized, and I think it's okay like this, and not. Nothing, nothing to do. The board must organize the, the work of the MC. I don't see that. Finish. Cool. Then Marina. Uh, so for uh, those sessions, I mean, that was not just uh, me doing uh, the, the work. Uh, I had uh, the, the initial idea looking at the open source community that is true. But uh, was, for example, uh, Shinji helping uh, to find the, the slot that uh, worked for the Japanese community was uh, always him uh, trying to uh, get uh, the, the right day for, uh, for having also Naruhiko doing uh, the translation and was the same also for, for, the, other, for the other sessions. I think that uh, uh, what uh, is needed in general, not just in the MC, but also in the, in the board, uh, is to, uh, to have a people that uh, wants to to run for the role uh, because this person sees uh, the the role as uh, something uh, with a meaning not just for being uh, appointed to be part uh, of uh, this body or, or the other um, we are volunteers as uh, as uh, Uwe was uh, was mentioning and uh, yeah Contributing to the project should be something that uh, we feel <laughs> like a, a kind of mission, and together with that, uh, we should try to, to work uh, to work together. Then, uh, I mean, it can happen that someone has a, a, a high workload because of uh, work or because of uh, personal uh, issues. It's perfectly fine, but uh, when uh, there is the commitment to to be in. Uh, in in one of the governing bodies, it's important to understand that uh, it's not just uh, one hour per, uh, per month, uh, but it's a bit more. It's, uh, I disagree that being in the MC is just uh, something that can be done, uh, investing uh, one hour per, uh, per quarter uh, for, uh, for, the, for the evaluation or one hour per, per month. If you want to look deeper uh, in the contributions, if you want to look deeper in uh, where are contributors that uh, could be invited to join for the memberships, uh, for the membership, uh, and so on? Huh? There's something more to do, and people uh, needs to commit and to invest uh, their, their time in the in the foundation. Great, Thank, thanks for that. Um, that extends the answer again. Um, maybe just to to tease out a little bit more there because that's just great to hear but i'm just to make sure that i i, I fully get the picture would you would you agree would, would you that think that statement is true that the mc is um is okay with having different speeds like everyone's having their own pace and it is okay if somebody's only able to spend two hours a month um and and that person is not holding back someone who can spend two hours per day and vice versa, the person who can spend a lot more time is not uh, upset about someone who, who can't because of other commitments. Uh, 
Okay, let me go first. Uh, well, I I don't think that. Uh, 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 so, uh, let me say it in this way. I think that it's perfectly fine not to have uh, different schedules and uh, being uh, available with uh, a different time frame. The, the point is that uh, if someone is uh, uh, taking the responsibility for a topic, uh, this person should uh, push on it uh, and, uh, and deliver without blocking the others. Then uh, uh, if someone can't attend a meeting, uh, it's perfectly fine to say, I can't, doesn't work for me. Uh, it's not nice uh, when uh, uh, everyone is waiting for someone uh, blocked uh, for uh, for weeks uh, without being able to 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 go with uh, with the steps uh, that are planned. That uh, I think it's uh, it's something that would frustrate everyone, <laughs> even a saint. <laughs> I mean, I think it's normal. We are we are human. But uh, apart from that, I think that it's perfectly fine to say uh, this month uh, I can't join any meeting, uh, next uh, month uh, I can uh, invest uh, eight hours per day. I mean, stating things clearly, it's uh, fair enough. Uh, announcing a kind of commitment uh, uh, without then uh, being even close to that kind of commitment, that, that it's uh, less nicer. Okay. So put it in short, as as everyone behaves professional, everything is okay. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> for the one, summary. With one exception. Uh, so uh, go, going to the to the, the original question, if if uh, if some some different speeds are okay, there is one exception. The, the chair himself or herself uh, has a duty to to push it forward on a regular basis. So if anyone else says, okay, next two months I'm away, okay, we can cope with that. But if the chair says, okay, next two months I'm away, then he has to care for from some replacement at least. <laughs> but that's the only exception, I think. So um, this is due to the duty to the project, kind of the project we do, so yeah. So this works fine at the moment, at least. No, uh, I know, I know what you meant, but we don't discuss this in public. <laughs> but but I think it's um it's it's very um. I think it's good to hear because it it, it enables a lot of things. Because it it the on ramp then for people to enter bodies is. Uh, is not not very steep and and while someone might not have time this year or next year they might have time in three years and they're already like working with the body and, and knowing the and knowing the ropes and, and all of that and um i'd maybe be interested in taking the leaf or two out of that book uh, for the board which has been historically been expecting quite a bit more from from everyone so that, that does resonate <laughs> thanks thanks for the for the answer then also the the, the 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 thoughts and 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 the input and and all of that so um so we talked about um like um the roles there and and uh, and membership and um I wonder. So, so let's maybe ask for uh, for questions from the audience. If people have something, I would, I would have, so, I could have some copy paste from from the last one. But I would have maybe one, uh, and we can spend probably spend the rest of the of the call on on that one. Um, but let's let's wait a second. If somebody has from the audience has a question. Of course, you can also ask yourself questions that you really would love to answer. <laughs> so, so then, then from from uh, let's say, given that you've both been with the project for essentially since day one, um, what would you think? And that's I I I I 
I'm the first to admit that that's not a, not something that the MC, that the natural role of the MC is, but I'm asking it anyway. So what would be the most important thing, the one thing that, that you would change or that you would do that you think has priority number one uh, for TDF? If you could change it. Uh, well, I think the manifesto, I mean, not changing it, but uh, uh, it was called uh, the next uh, decade manifesto. The decade is ended, so we should uh, have a new manifesto and uh, uh, have a, a clear vision that should be the base of uh, all the, the rest of the work that uh, we want to do. Uh, it's uh, how we want to to define uh, TDF uh, for the next decade. So I think that should uh, should have a priority. It's quite easy. We just rename it. Well, you know, you know, I worked I worked a little bit on this with the board and. Uh, this was my last proposal, but they didn't like it. <clears throat> not my monkey, not my circus. To put it clear, I tried my best. They don't like it. So to answer this question quite quickly, it's, it's quite easy. I would clone Florian. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I, mean, I would, I would, I would clone Florian. Clone, okay. Yeah, double him. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean, and um, it, it does resonate. Uh, given that we likely are not permitted to do that, um, given uh, <laughs> local laws, um, anything else you think we should do? Yeah, you, but you got the idea. Uh, yeah, we, we need more, let's say, executive working, which didn't don't block anymore the board in, in doing its, his uh, very own work. Uh, my feeling is that the board is 80% of the time is doing the work, uh, someone else's work. And mostly of this, uh, because this someone else isn't existing. So this is this is what I thought. Uh, what I what I what I said. We have to perhaps rethink our structures. There are maybe at the end too simple for such a big thing like we have now. Maybe maybe maybe. And I will ask Florian and, and maybe Mike uh, at the workshop in, at, at Milano. This is a thing I'm interested, very interested. If they ever imagined that this that this TDF would, would would grow up that big, because I think the structures they defined uh, twelve years ago or such such time around, yeah, they are okay, but I don't think they're suitable for for such such uh, managing such a complex organization with such many different dimensions of action and uh, such such an, such an amount of money at us so uh, maybe we rethink on that and this is this is what the board really should do we think on that but it needs time to do that because they're all volunteers and uh, to get the time they must they must get the, the table clear and i'm feeling i'm feeling the uh, the incoming incoming uh, questions and incoming work for the board, which must be decided by the work, are always just a little bit more than the outgoing one. So so the tile gets bigger and bigger again, and this has to be changed. This is I think this is the most essential thing thing which uh, the TDF should do. In my opinion, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe I there are also really really important other things like to be like to be like to get a consensus on the vision i don't think it is that important to have this vision written down but to have the consensus a, a common view of it this is the this is the, this is the core of the problem 
Yeah. Both people. So, so I. So I, I think I agree, but no, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm, I do agree with, with both of you. Uh, and I think those are aspects. So, so having, having this manifesto or having this vision um, that provides guidance in and of itself. So, so you don't need to spend so much time uh, arguing over um, where to go because that's already, that has been yeah. argued and, and written down and there is some, some broad direction um, put uh, and, and agreed upon. And, and the other bit, of course, is the scaling problem that, that, we're, that we're increasingly um, running into. Uh, and, and the fact that the that board is dealing with many things and doesn't find it's like this, uh, this, this dilemma, I can't, I, I can't sharpen my tools because I'm so busy working with them. So, so just <laughs> improving the processes and, and finding time to realize and 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 scale up and and find find the the cycles to 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 work on that is, is a challenge when you when you want to get into that uh, situation and the problem the other problem is of course that there's been a string of firefighting incidents uh, in the past year or two uh, which didn't really help like for all involved uh, in terms of workload and and having the the brain capacity and uh, yeah the, the the leisure to 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 do that so uh, it it I I I wholeheartedly agree there um, so I I wonder how many workshops we will actually need um, in Milano um, to to deal with all that backlog. Um, I, I would hesitate to put that uh, all into yours, Uwe. Um, yeah, and, and so, so maybe the silver lining is that that's a problem that everyone has. Uh, and since it's a problem that everyone has, there's a cottage industry uh, of people with uh, uh, good advice <laughs> and an experience um, that one could tap into possibly. Um, yeah. For me, that was um, that was enlightening. Um, what else should we talk about? I'm kind of running slowly out of steam. I, I could again just uh, paste, repaste some some questions from from the last session, but it starts to probably starts to be a little bit redundant. Maybe this transparency thing as a the very last bit, but um, yeah, what, what do you think, Marina? Uber? Um, I didn't get your last two or three minutes because I was thrown out of session by some obscure internet breakdown. <laughs> I was just praising the uh, the input there, so you didn't miss much. <laughs> okay, I have uh, I have a citation for you. My secretary could help me a real lot uh, if I would find the time to explain to him why it's what to do. What, what, to, do. what to do. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, but, but honestly, so so, so that's problem. that's the that is that is everybody's problem. So that is just the the absolute box standard problem that everybody has. Every organization, every company, even even when when you scale up your family so that that's just normal um no, so, so I, I think i think it is it is uh, in most of the time most of the time it's uh it's not in most but maybe 50 50 it's just uh, to hide the incapability to to let loose or, or the, the, the over engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying that that that's good reasons. I'm just saying that everybody's got the problem. <laughs> so, so everybody's uh, everybody's as 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 an organization grows. Um, that, that is my experience. Like be that uh, an association, uh, foundation, an open source project without any formal governance. Or a company, they they all hit this this. There, there's a natural limit 
that that one person can handle. And once you hit that limit, you 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 stop. Yeah, like you you're essentially just swapping uh, in and out and thrashing and and not making any progress. So. And then there's probably about a million reasons why that is. And, and one is that, of course, um, letting go and delegating is, is doesn't come natural. Uh, well, um, I agree that uh, that is a common problem, but uh, uh, then we should uh, probably, as you hint uh, in the last sentence, delegate more and uh, look at uh, the, the skills that are already in house and try to just uh, let uh, the people with, uh, with those skills uh, do the job or give advices uh, on uh, uh, how to, to do something uh, in a more efficient way. Uh, something uh, that, uh, that maybe we should uh, <laughs> work better and I'm saying a we because it's also something that I need to do better, uh, is to set properly the priorities on, uh, on the tasks uh, that uh, we really want to work on uh, and uh, avoid to overload uh, the, the others that can still do something but that are not plenty of time uh, uh, always to, to do something. Because, uh, you know, if, uh, if you are always pushing a million of topics in parallel, at the end, uh, the people that have uh, less time available or in uh, a, let's say, less constant way are just giving up because <laughs> they don't know, they can't catch up even with the, with the backlog of things that uh, needs, to do, needs to be done. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I so much liked your um, your description, and and I again I, I was that's why I was asking whether I got it right that you have this this um, this idea of of different speeds. So so that you have people like working on something, and then that's okay. And if someone is interested, they they can just open the door and look what's going on there with the with the new um, MC system or or with, with the town hall meetings. And and but if you don't have the time, then well, you show up at the whatever at, at the bi-weekly call, and, and that's fine as well. And th that, so, my my mental model, my, my ideal would be that's something that that we should do, not only in in the MC but but elsewhere, like having working groups with people who really are interested in the topic, and then they can work and spend lots of time, and everybody else just gets the result or the. Uh, occasional update on, on progress? Uh, yes and no. Yes, uh, because we need to, to have a, to, to achieve something, to have things done. Huh? So I definitely agree on this. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, uh, we can't simply uh, push out uh, uh, the, the others uh, or, you know, deliver, deliver, deliver and uh, just uh, give to the others. Uh, uh, a chance to to see what is going on. Uh, we should be uh, able to to include in any case uh, the, the different people that are uh, in the different bodies. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is going back to to what I was saying at the beginning. Uh, if you don't have time uh, and you don't have time always, you should not run for uh, for the bodies. You, you need to commit, uh, knowing uh, that you need to have the time. That is, uh, I think, the, the the important part. Then it's fine to not have time always, declaring it. But if this uh, impediment uh, it's uh, it's a constant, uh, then uh, the, the person should just uh, say, "I can't anymore. I'm stepping down." I think it's fair to say that instead of just uh, being in the body, keeping the the seat busy, not doing anything. So, so what would be the for, for the membership committee, what would both of you think would, would be the minimum per week or per month that, that, that to, to be useful? I think that uh, if you can't commit uh, one hour per week, uh, it's, uh, it's hard uh, to be the, the person driving a topic. Yep. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That that's um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm glad to. You not will be able to drive a topic this one hour a week because uh, half of the time you are in the meeting of the MC every two weeks for one hour, and the other hour every two weeks is is far far away from what's necessary to drive a topic. You may help here and there. Uh, others uh, others with their topics, but drive it itself. Okay, maybe a very slow topic. But that's good to hear that, that first of all, you agree there and that it's actually pretty low um, in, in terms of like necessary investment. So, so that in my view, it would be perfectly possible for pretty much any volunteer to... To be perfectly clear, this is the necessary investment. You shouldn't go behind that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's really the, the minimum requirement for doing something that, that as a meaning for, uh, for the foundation. Otherwise, it's just really claiming a seat uh, uh, for stating in the CV that you are uh, in the body for uh, that term. Okay, so... Is there, there, there's quite some comments, but I don't see any actual question. But maybe if you put a question mark behind your... Uh, oh, and we have Hossein uh, raise your hand. Hossein, shoot. Yeah, uh, I was enjoying the discussion and I thank you all for the great discussion that uh, you had. One thing that uh, I wanted to say is that uh, do you, what do you think about uh, the member commi uh, membership committee to be kind of proactive and, for example, find uh, some uh, eligible persons who are actively contributing but uh, not currently members of the TDF? Uh, I want to know if you uh have tried to find uh, such people and uh ask them to become members what do you think about this idea have you done this before and or do you have plans to do this uh well uh this was also something that we touched uh, in the in the previous call um yes uh, we have uh, the the dashboard for example uh, that uh, is giving us uh, an overview of uh, the contributors in the different uh, part of the project. Uh, and that is uh, one place to look into. Uh, the other is uh, our uh, local communities, because I mean, it's clear that as a member of a local community, we, we know a bit better uh, who is also active, uh, that uh, is still just, uh, let's say, a, a contributor, but uh, no, not a member. So we have done that in the past. Uh, we could uh, do it more, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, part of the job. I mean, we can't just expect uh, that contributors will uh, fall from the sky. <laughs> we need to search for uh, uh, those people and uh, invite them uh, to to join the the board of trustee after being uh, contributors, or just uh, you know those users uh, that. Uh, you can understand, you can feel that uh, they could do more just uh, with, a, with a bit of push. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's something uh, that, uh, that we can do more, definitely. More. At least I can speak for myself uh, as a member also of the Italian community. And we have uh, several Uwe joining, so maybe if uh, one of the Uwe wants to add something. Yeah, Uwe, just, just in time, if you would like to answer the question. With a short no, me personally, I didn't. Uh, I have not that that uh, multiple connections to all the community out there. Uh, my 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 thing is more governance and uh, such legal things for the TDF and such things. So so you see, there is there is there are also different interests in the MC, and anyone anyone follows his his nose, <laughs> as we say in Germany, or follows his hobbies. So one, one of Marina's favorite is to find new members. And uh, I have other ones. And uh, I don't know if you can hear me or see me by now. Oh, yeah, OK. Yes, indeed, we can. 
Do that to all the thing. Or, or Mr. Mr. Something of your question. Yeah, yeah. I was just asking uh, something that you answered. So, can the the uh, request can come from someone who actually uh, be um, been there in the community for a while and. Uh, someone who understands the membership and uh, asks uh, to be a member and him or herself or you can uh, go and offer someone to become a member so these are two different approaches yeah but, but uh, you prefer that someone uh, asks uh, explicitly uh, and uh, as far as I'm, I understood from your answer, uh, you don't offer someone to become a member. Is that right? If I did it, if it's so, so, so it question, right. So the question, Uwe, is if you, if you actively go out hunting for members and then encourage them to, to apply for membership. Me personally, I do not, but I don't know if others. Marina? I'm trying, uh, sometimes I'm successful, <laughs> sometimes not. I mean, it's, uh, I think, part of the game. Uh, it's clear that uh, it depends uh, also on, uh, yeah, the beer, <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> Uh, the, the point is that I, for for me, uh, I still have connections uh, with, uh, with the Italian community, even if I'm living in Germany. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, uh, interacting with uh, with the with the local contributors, trying to bring them uh, also to to TDF, uh, is uh, something that in general I I like to do. I mean, I'm Italian and. Uh, I'm the stereotype of the Italian, so I like to socialize with people, <laughs> not jokes apart. But uh, yeah, sometimes I, I, I was able to, to bring uh, uh, contributors to the, to the membership. But uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, I don't think that uh, one approach or the other is, uh, is the, the right one. I think we should have both. And if we are keeping uh, the, the different approaches uh, inside the DMC, at the end we will bring uh, contributors. It's, uh, it's fine. Okay, thanks a whole lot. Um, does that answer the question, Hossein? Uh, yes, thanks. Okay, so we certainly have time for one more question um, and one more beer. <laughs> so, is there is there any more questions from the audience? I can I can come up with any number of questions, but um, maybe somebody else has. Okay, so then let me let me ask this, and maybe um, given that we have ten minutes left, some like three four minutes answer each of you. Um, you have. At least Marina, you, you mentioned it a number of times, but I think Uwe, you were also referring to, um, let's say, other communities and, and other projects. What would be your, um, from, from all open source projects that you know, that you heard about, that you've seen, that maybe you are volunteering in, you have participated in, um, which one would be the one that you would like to a TDF to become or LibreOffice project to become? Uh, it can be self-referential, it can be TDF, um, but maybe there's other guiding lights we could follow. Well, apart from uh, TDF and LibreOffice, I'm involved in the open source community, so <laughs> that is uh, it's the obvious answer uh, from, uh, from my side. Uh, there are some uh, some nice things that uh, that I like from uh, from the open source project. I like, for example, this uh, idea to have uh, town hall meetings uh, for the elections. Uh, that comes from there. 
I was stealing uh, without hiding it. I was stealing it uh, from uh, from that community, and uh, they were looking at uh, our uh, our model, uh, and uh, they were also looking uh, at uh, our tool for handling uh, the the membership. So I think in general it's uh, it's good to look around because I don't think that uh, uh, any one of us is just uh, involved uh, in LibreOffice and in uh, TDF. Everyone is. <laughs> Uh, somehow connected also with other local communities, other projects, uh, and we should just uh, share and uh, look, uh, uh, try to, to take the best of, from uh, from every project and uh, try to improve on uh, all these sides. To be honest, I'm, I don't know that much as a project. What I was thinking about last day, so I wrote it, uh, sorry, a course, course, course done. Oh, okay. I, I, I discussed with him. He has brought up the idea of uh, how there, there was some some woman getting a Nobel Prize for how to handle uh, common common goods, and he uh, he brought this up and, and we discussed some something because common goods what what she researched on are, are re restricted, limited common goods like grazing areas. And um, we have we have uh, we have a non-restricted common good because uh, software copying software doesn't cost nothing. So this is another, in, in my opinion, another thing. And so we discussed this a little bit, and I, I came to that point. I don't know. I, I don't, didn't think very much on that. But but what I've, what I'm what's pleasing me is um, the, when I'm looking at the Apache Foundation. I don't know very much about them, but as far as I got it, they have a real, they have, they have a really strict divide between the single project which handles his technical issues within the project and the roof of, of the foundation, which handles the legal and the governance aspects. Um, maybe, maybe this, this could be the one or other idea to, to, to get this more divided in the TDF because I feel uh, technical and and governance and legal aspects are uh, a lot, there's a lot of turmoil with them and inter interfering one of the other. And uh, maybe, maybe it's a good idea to think about the role of the ESC or something like this. But uh, no no special thing where i could say hey this project this is really great we should do like they no. cool yeah but it's it's very very um enlightening so 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 maybe if i summarize um what you suggest is that there's no single project that would be like the the role model or anything it's more like oh it's good to look around and shop around and cherry pick and then um, get, get the good ideas and leave the bad ideas there. Uh, as far as I know, no one found the Philosopher's Stone by now. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cherry picking may be a good idea. Okay. Yeah, and, and it's interesting that, that you, I mean, I've, I've also been, uh, or I'm still involved with the OpenSUSE project. Uh, and and um, um, I well uh, let's say I'm following the the ASF uh, from the distance, um, and certainly in terms of scale, it is one of the the largest uh, foundations. And as such, because they managed to scale it up, um, it's something to to keep in mind and 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 look at and and analyze. That is true. So, Marina, please. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, a model to look into is also, for example, uh, the Fedora project. It's true that uh, they just have a, a, a company behind, that they have a Red Hat behind, but uh, how they are keeping uh, uh, 
the, the freedom inside the, the project, the freedom to decide, the freedom to organize the different working group. Uh, it's uh, in any case uh, something really, really interesting that, for example, is missing in the OpenSUSE project. Uh, on the OpenSUSE project side, uh, there's uh, really a lot of freedom to sketch something new. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, having time and pushing for something and no one unless someone will stop uh, a contributor to do something. Um, the Python Foundation, uh, they have a really great uh, uh, code of conduct. This is something uh, that honestly I'm really envious <laughs> because they manage to, <laughs> to have it uh, and to have it uh, done really, really well in a professional way. So that is the idea of uh, shopping and uh, cherry picking uh, from uh, from the different projects. Of course, looking uh, in the right yeah, direction. I, 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 I meant it in an in an, in an absolutely no, non disparaging way. Um, so so I think I mean that's that's actually. I mean that's one of the features with open source. So you don't reinvent the wheel. You just you just clone it or fork it or uh, just uh, embed it like LibreOffice with the with the many third party libraries. So like sharing of ideas and just this like this market of ideas and then just getting the best, finding the best. Um, I think that comes quite natural to an open source project. Okay, so um, given that it's three minutes uh, to the to the two hours limit, um, unless there is last words or comments or a very very short question, I would say let's call it a day. It's been a long one, at least for me, and also for many of you. Thanks so much for for uh, Marina and Uwe for for attending twice today, um, and for everybody else here um, for for asking wonderful questions and having a, an absolutely lovely conversation. It was super great, entertaining, enlightening. I, I loved it. Enjoy the repeat on YouTube. <laughs> See you around. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Uh. Hi all. See you. Bye bye. bye. Good night. Thanks for bye. watching.